Hey, what's up everyone? What's up YouTube? My name is Camilla or Aaron, whichever you know me as. Um, I make transgender related topic videos for YouTube. They are purely for edu educational purposes only and um, they're biased, so I'm sharing my experience. I uh, consider myself a, a conservative trans person. Um, it's very obvious no one can change their sex. You can have surgeries, um, take cross-sex hormones, etc., to look and resemble um, a member of the opposite sex from which you were born, but you will never become the opposite sex, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, that's one issue that a lot of the trans community has been pushing and pushing and pushing the straight world um, for acceptance. And we've done that forever, but we used to do it in a lot different ways than the trans, the woke trans community is um, pushing for their rights. And the harder they push, the less rights they have. They are stripping rights of trans people, but they act like this is transgender genocide in the United States, and there's no such thing, not at all. They're making bans on um, hormone treatment for minors because a minor is not old enough to get a tattoo or buy a pack of cigarettes. How in the world are they old enough to go through a medical process that will sterilize them? You know, I just can't, it's not right. and we're pushing for acceptance and I don't include myself in that we. This video is not about pol politics as much as it is what is it really like to be um, a trans person and what is it like to be a trans YouTuber? Like when people that live in my neighborhood you know, come up to me and say, I love your videos. People in my neighborhood are watching this. I only have 1.15 thousand subscribers, but I do get hundreds of thousands of views over the past five months of making these videos. And I guess, you know, even at work, I've had people um, tell me, you know, I've seen you on YouTube and that automatically outs me. Um, I moved to my neighborhood. Um, I was in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I moved to Georgia, Atlanta area in 2019, right before the pandemic. And I've lived in the same neighborhood, more or less, a majority of uh, my time living here. And at my parents' residence, um, you know, all, all of our neighbors have been so nice. And one of the things was, is a lot of people didn't know I was trans until um, I started making these videos. Like, my mom walks the dogs and everyone in, in Georgia waves like it's that southern hospitality when they drive by. Well, neighbors have stopped interacting with my mom as much um, when she walks the dogs. People, a lot less people are waving because they've seen me on YouTube. And that's what it's like living um, in a community uh, when you come out or if, you, if you're obviously, obviously trans or um, you know, you are some type of influencer or people have view you online, it kind of, um, it kind of diminishes my privacy. But at the same time, I make these videos to help trans people and non trans people alike to understand these topics better. Um, and just do it with a non woke perspective. And there's nothing wrong with being trans. And Unfortunately, there's a lot of fake trans people at this point, but hopefully um, gatekeeping will strengthen up and we can get rid of this bullshit in our community. I'm not hating, I'm just saying that the trans community has painted a really bad reputation for itself, I would say within the past 10 years. Um, and as a result of that, my mom and dad have been discriminated against in our neighborhood. Um, people that were friendly were no longer friendly. I've had neighbors ask me, what are you? Like, are you a man? Are you a woman? Like, what are you? And it's because of these videos. And the real world is really nice. Some people sincerely don't know I'm trans. Some people do. Mm, I would say 99% of people that do know would never say a thing to me. In fact, um, you know, at work, I'm gendered properly as she, her, ma'am. Um, 
and that's nice you know people think that becoming trans that you're it's like you know you're committing social suicide it's it, it is taboo but with that being said situations like my neighbors being less friendly um that that's the downside i feel bad for my parents because it's me that brought that upon them now the neighbors are less friendly to my family um I've had my mom's been asked about, uh, does your daughter make YouTube videos by people? Um, at work, people come up to me and say, hey, I've seen you on YouTube. And it's just like, you know, there's a lot less privacy because I put my life out there and share these experiences. And I kind of, I'm not sacrificing myself, but I am sacrificing some of my privacy and my personal experience in life with the entire world essentially on YouTube in hopes that I can help someone. Um, being trans is not any different than being non-trans. And why I say that is at the end of the day, a human being is a human being, regardless of their sex or regardless of their gender identity, it, it, we're all people. And if you transition long enough, you will realize that you kind of forget you're trans sometimes. Like it, you don't think about it after you've done it for a good portion of your life it's it's all you know a day in the life of a trans person is not much different than a day in the life of a non-trans person um the only difference is we take hormones and maybe like i take testosterone blockers um most people don't take those that aren't trans but besides that there's not really a big difference i will say that earlier in transition when you are less passable um, when you look more like your birth gender still because you're early in your journey, life can be awkward. People stare. Um, I remember when I would, had like, short hair still and was a lot more manly looking. Um, children and women would stare at me in public. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. But it was very, um, it made me feel horrible. Like it, it's like everyone knows and everyone did. And um, that was awkward. You know, when I go shopping, I would get dirty looks from people. That's really hard, um, but I chose to do this. So I have to live with those repercussions. And I had about two years in my life where I was, it was very socially awkward. Um, I didn't work the first two years of my transition. I wasn't mentally um, stable enough due to people staring at me. I was just uncomfortable. I was going through some bad depression. And one of the things that I will say is the longer you do this, the less awkward it's going to be for you. Um, because if you're on hormones long enough and you maybe you have some feminization surgery, um, or if you're a trans man, your voice drops and you grow a beard, um, you know, people aren't gonna know, especially with trans men. But trans women, it's a lot different. Um, and for me, at least, it's a lot different because like we have to like get procedures to remove our facial hair permanently where trans men don't have facial hair. But when they take testosterone after six months to a year, they've got straight up facial hair. Trans women, on the other hand, have to get their facial hair removed either via laser hair removal or electrolysis and it's permanent and it takes you know it can take a year or two of treatments to be fully facial hair free now thankfully i didn't really have any body hair um prior to transitioning so it's just my facial hair that i had removed um and the longer you're in a transition the, the more um time you've spent living living as that gender so i was born an intersex male so biologically i'm a male um for me it was awkward and um i don't think that if you are mentally strong that transitioning is something i would suggest i always recommend transition as a last resort to treating gender dysphoria I think it's important for you to go and see a therapist, um, someone who has experience with other trans clients, because they're gonna be able to help you. 
we have a lot of people in 2000, in the 2020s that are transitioning for the wrong reasons. We have social contagion in the youth. TikTok has kind of like rotted the minds of people and we see things that aren't real, like gender, like tri-gender or gender non-conforming. Um, there's a million different types of genders out there due to people creating labels. And what sucks is if you transitioned to 10, 15, 20 years ago or more, what we fought for was to not have labels. What we fought for was just to be men and women in society. There wasn't like people with third gender pronouns or neo pronouns. That's all, it doesn't really exist 10, even 10 years ago. So I do think the trans community in its own way has made it harder on themselves. They've caused their own oppression. Um, when I started my transition, I technically started in 2011 on testosterone blocker. So that was about 13 years ago. And I started estrogen treatment on top of that in the 2013. So 11 years I've spent um, living as a female, living. And I'm obviously, I can't change my sex, but what I do is I take cross-sex hormones, I've had facial procedures, I have developed secondary sex characteristics of a woman. And that kind of allows me to live my life freely. Um, it allows me to be myself, but what I've gone through and what I've, the pain that this has caused for my family, for lost friends, for lost family members, um, relationships that just fell out, transitioning, um, you have to be willing to lose anything and everything. If you're not willing to lose anything and everything and you proceed with this, you um, things aren't looking good for you. And it's really important that we get a hold um, that tra transgender healthcare providers really gatekeep that because we don't need all of these people who really shouldn't be transitioning that are medically transitioning in 2024. It makes a bad reputation because detransitioners are, there's so many of them now. There used to not be that many. It used to have a very, very, very low regret rate. But when you introduce uh, like prepubescent or um, adolescent children to puberty blockers or surgeries or cross-sex hormones, they're not old enough to make those type of decisions. They're not even old enough to get a tattoo or buy a pack of cigarettes. And when you transition, you're gonna sterilize yourself, whether you're male to female or female to male, whether you're born a guy or born a girl, whichever way you go, you're gonna sterilize yourself. And at the bottom line, if I said, what is the I guess the most expensive opportunity cost of transitioning, I would say the lack of ability to procreate. Um, you can even, if I were to get gender reassignment surgery, have a vagina, um, I think that my dating options would be even greater than they are now. But with that being said, I can never offer a man a child. And because of that, no one, I mean, I have a partner that loves me and adores me, but most people aren't able to basically spend the rest of their life with someone that can't give them children. If you do want to transition, it's important to find someone who's already had children or someone who just does not have that desire to have kids in their lifetime. And the reason I say this is because most people, we're we are inherently designed as homo sapiens to procreate and to continue on our lineage as a species. And when you do something like what I've done to my body, I have eliminated my ability to procreate. Bottom line, that is the uh, biggest catch 22 because I get to live as a woman. I get to live as a woman, I'm not a woman but I get to live as one in society. Society overall sees me as one, and that's great. That's alleviated my gender dysphoria so much, and it's made my life better.
but not all trans people's lives end up better, you know, five, ten years after they start transitioning. I've had a lot of friends unalive themselves um, because of rejection, because of stigma, because of depression. Um, the list goes on. Being trans it does not have to be depressing. You don't have to be oppressed and marginalized minority. Um, there is no trans genocide going on. Um, but what there is, is there's a lot of people that aren't actually trans that are transitioning. And because trans is such a politicized topic in today's day and age, um, children hear about it. TikTok shows children about it, even YouTube. I'm sure my videos have been viewed by minors and this content isn't really, you know, suitable for minors. It's not intended. That's not my target audience. People like Jeffrey Marsh, um, guys like that, they like to talk with children. I'm not making accusations. I'm just saying that he's a real weirdo and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying that are people in our community our community that shouldn't be there and that they've oppressed themselves uh, as i said earlier earlier in my life and early in transition i was around a lot of transsexuals that transitioned in the 80s the 90s the 2000s and back then it, we were everyone was trans medicalist and i am and that basically means i was born with a mental disorder with gender a gender identity disorder and now we have all of these people that don't have gender identity issues transitioning and it's bad um a day in the life of a trans person is no different than a day in the life of yours if you're not trans but it's interesting i'd say that it's add a lot of zest and flavor to my life my life is very robust i'm very happy um overall i have depression and anxiety but overall, I am happy with my decision. But with people transitioning at the rate they are in today's day and age, of course, statistically, we're gonna have a lot more detransitions. So basically the whole point of this video is to tell you that the trans community has changed drastically in the past 20 years. And though I haven't been transitioning that long, I have been attending transgender support groups in real life since 2006. So, um, yeah, it's like 17, 18 years ago, I, like 18 years ago. That's crazy, but it's so much different. And the mindset of the trans community was so much more um, modest. We didn't ask for much. We asked for our pronouns once we looked the part or looked the part to the best of our ability. Now we have people that are asking to be called Zezer. What, what the hell is Zezer? I don't know. But if you like this video and would like to see more content like this, please like this video. Please subscribe. Like, come on, just hit it. Because if you subscribe to my channel, I promise if you watch my videos, you'll learn about trans topics. If you're trans and you're new to your transition, I do have over 100 videos. And I would say at least 50 of those are transgender related topics their how-tos. I'm here to help people. Um, I get a lot of hate in it from in my real life from people and, and even on Reddit I've like been banned from certain subreddits because people know I'm conservative trans and the trans community the trans narrative says you have to be liberal when you don't. Anyhow I'll see y'all next time and I hope this video helped. Bye!